The first system of swarm intelligence that we will discuss is Particle Swarm Optimization or PSO. Let's start. PSO is inspired mostly by the social behavior of bird flocking and fish schooling and especially the way they move. The key questions here are how does a large number of birds can fly gracefully in a group but they can suddenly change direction and they can scatter but they can regroup again. A scientist by the name of Craig Reynolds broke down this capability through three simple behaviors. And the first one is separation. In separation, birds make sure that they are not crowding other birds in the flock. Basically, they are practicing social distancing. And the second behavior is called alignment. In alignment, birds align themselves towards the average heading of other birds in the flock. So for example, in this picture, you can see this particular bird is facing forward while the rest of the flocks are facing to the left. Therefore, this flock will move its head to the left so that it is moving towards the average heading of the local flock mates. The third behavior is cohesion. In this, birds will move towards the average position of local flock mates or to the center of mass of local flock mates. So these birds, um, if you look at the circle for these birds, the other local flock mates are not inside the circle. Therefore, this bird will move to the left so that its circle will encompass the other flock mates. The concept of PSO in AI is population-based, stochastic or random technique for optimization. A number of agents or particles will be initialized and they will move around in the search space looking for the best solutions. And particles, they act like birds. And where each particle is a bird and the group of particles is a swarm. Each particle will adjust its flying according to its own flying experience as well as the flying experience of other particles or other birds. Each particle in the swarm is flying in the search space to find the optimum or the best possible solution. And because each, each particle is moving or flying, all of these particles have their own velocity. During initialization, all of these particles will be randomly assigned a position in the search space and randomly assigned velocity. So some birds might be flying very fast to the left and some birds might be flying very slow to the right. Each of these particles will also remember the position of these two things. The first one is the location where it has or it found the best solution so far and this is called personal best or p best and the second position that each of the particles in the search space remember is that the best value of any particle in the swarm or is it it is called global best also known as g best particles in swarm they cooperate by communicating information about what have been discovered in places that they have visited. So in a search space, so for example, this is a search space, you can have lots of particles moving in everywhere. And each of these particles will communicate with each other about the solutions that they have found in the search space. And how it works is very simple. Each of these particles 
will have their own neighborhood and the particle knows the fitnesses of those in its neighborhood. So this particular particle, for example, particle A, knows the fitnesses of particle B, C and D. The particle will then use the position of the particle with best fitness in the neighborhood to adjust its own velocity. So what this means is basically, if currently the particle C over here has the best solution or the best position, particle A will adjust its velocity. So if currently it is moving to the right, it will change it so that it moves more to the left so that it will go towards the global best. To illustrate search space and particles, this is an example of optimization problem. Imagine you are a delivery person and you need to fill up the delivery van with parcel boxes. So you have small boxes and you also have large boxes. So if you fill up the van with just large boxes, time taken will be short, but there will be spaces in van that is not maximized. However, if you fill up the van with only small boxes, the van space can be maximized, but time taken will be long. And remember, in both situations, you still need to deliver all of the boxes. Therefore, you need to find the best combination of large and small boxes to be filled up the van that will take the shortest amount of time to fill up the van, maximize van space, and take the smallest amount of trips. Therefore, the fitness will be measured by first, how much time is taken to fill up the van. Second, how you maximize the van space. And third, smallest amount of trip to finish delivering all of these parcels. So in this graph over here, on the X axis, uh, amount of short boxes. Meanwhile, on the Y axis, uh, amount of large boxes. So we will try to solve this optimization problem using particle swarm optimization. And this is our search space. And during initialization, five particles are randomly positioned. So each of these particles, A, B, C, D, E, have their own velocity. Velocity basically means the speed of something in a given direction. Each of these particles represents a solution. So for example, particle A said that we should fill up the van with 13 large boxes and 3 small boxes. This is not short, eh? small boxes. Particle B is saying we should try to fill up the van with 13 large boxes and 12 small boxes. Particle C says that um, the, the candidate uh, solution is to fill up the van with seven small boxes and um, eight large boxes. So each of these particles represent a pot potential solution. So all of these solutions will be tested for its fitness. Um, with, and this fitness, like we have established, is time to fill up the van, the van space, whether it is maximized, and whether it would take the smallest amount of trip because this all happens at t equals to zero all 
solutions are best solutions so far for each of these particles. Therefore, these are their own personal best because they have just been initialized. At the same time, the best solution of all the particles will be known by the rest of the flocks and this is known as global best. In each time step or t, a particle has to move to a new position. It will modify the position according to this information. First, current position. Second, current velocity. Third, distance between current position and personal best. And fourth, distance between current position and global best. So once the particle has worked out the new velocity, it will update its position by adding up all position and this new velocity. And the goal of the movement is to get the swarm moving to a promising area that signifies global optimum or the best solution. This diagram shows how um, several factors influence the movement of a particle. So we have global best, meaning the best solution so far in the flock. Um, we have personal best, personal solution so far found by the particle. And we also have the current velocity or the current motion influence. So if you see here, this is the current position of a particle. According to the current velocity, this is where the particle is heading. However, the next movement will be influenced by the memory of its own personal best and also the influence of the global best of the swarm. Therefore, at t plus 1, this will be the new location of the particle. Now, let's revisit our optimization problem with large boxes and small boxes again. So, previously at t equals to 0, all of these particles were initialized. And because all of these particles represent a solution, their solutions were measured. And it was discovered that particle A has the global best. Now, let's put our focus at this particle E. According to its current velocity, it will be moving here. And its own personal best is this position because it only knows one personal solution. Therefore, the only one personal solution is the personal best. Because the next position at t equals to 1 will be influenced not only by the current trajectory of the velocity, but also personal best and also global best, the next position of particle E will be towards here. Okay, as mentioned in previous slides, particle velocity will be updated for each time step and they are influenced by current velocity, personal best and global best. So equation A here is the equation for calculating the new velocity for the next time step. There are several variables involved in this equation. V is the path velocity. C1 is the weight in the direction of personal best or how influential personal best is in changing the velocity. C2 is the weight in the direction of global best or how influential global best is in changing velocity and p best and also global best meanwhile rand here are random values or random variable that can have values between 0 until 1 so this is equation a the equation to calculate new velocity for the next time step. Next, we look at equation B. Equation 
P is the equation for new position of particle. It is just simply the next position is the current position plus the new velocity which we get from equation A. The whole process can be represented in this pseudocode and it is a good idea to understand and memorize the flow of this pseudocode. So let's take a look at the pseudocode line by line. So for each particle, initialize particle and and do for each particle, calculate the fitness value. If the fitness value is better than its personal best, the new value will be the new personal best and Choose the particle with the best fitness value as global best. And for each particle, calculate particle velocity according to equation A that we have taken a look at in the previous slide. Update the new particle position according to equation B, which is P equals to P plus V. And, and all of this is while the maximum iterations or the minimum error criteria is not attained. In an PSO experiment, there are several parameters that we need to set. So, example of parameters are swarm size and also neighborhood size. However, these parameters are not really important. More significant are Vmax. And Vmax is basically the maximum velocity for a particle. So if a new calculated velocity is bigger than Vmax, it will take the value of Vmax because you cannot have velocity value beyond Vmax. And these are algorithm parameters that we need to consider before we start a PSO experiment. So first is number of particles. So 10 to 50 particles are usually sufficient. Number two, C1. Importance of personal best, how influential personal best is in determining um, the change in velocity. Okay, third, C2 or importance of neighborhood best or global best. How important global best is in changing the velocity of a particle. And the fourth parameter to be considered is Vmax and this is where we have mentioned the maximum value of velocity. If Vmax is too low, um, the experiment will be too slow. If Vmax is too high, the experiment will be too unstable. Here is a visualization of particles searching for optimum solution. This graph is three-dimensional. So you have the x-axis you have the y-axis and the third axis is actually depth. And yellow signifies height of 20. Meanwhile, 0 and below are represented by blue. And if you can look at the graph, you have these colors representing depth. You can see that initially, all particles are scattered throughout the search space and each will be testing the fitness of varied possible solutions. And then after several time steps and at the end, the particles converge to several optimum values representing the solutions with best fitness. This animation meanwhile shows a swarm of robots. Each of these robots they do not have complex processing capability because they are just simple robots. However, by communicating with each other, these robots have the capability to change signal with other robots. And through this simple capability of communication, they are able to display complex global behaviors. And that's it for particle swarm optimization. In the next video, we will discuss and colony optimization.